I'm certified financial planner Casey Weed, and today we're going to be discussing my Kiplinger article titled Why You Don't Need a Financial Advisor and Why You May Not Need a Certified Financial Planner for that matter. And we'll also be discussing what's going on in the economy and our 2018 market outlook. Welcome to the Purpose Based Retirement with Certified Financial Planner Practitioner, Casey Wee. It's not how much we make during the good times, it's how much we keep during those really bad times. Casey leads a team of financial advisors with decades of experience, helping families across the country retire with the confidence they deserve. The Purpose-Based Retirement assigns every dollar you've saved to specific purpose to meet a key retirement need. Whatever risk you face, we've got a plan for that. Stay tuned and learn how you can look forward to a worry-free, purpose-based retirement. Good to see you again. I'm glad you tuned in for the Purpose-Based Retirement. I am Lee Kelso here with Casey Weed, Certified Financial Planner and the President of Howard Bailey Financial. We're going to start today with an article that might surprise you. Casey wrote it for Kiplinger's. It's coming out soon and it's entitled, Why You Don't Need a planner. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I think there's a lot of rhetoric and a lot of talk by financial advisors that you have to work with a financial advisor. You have to work with a financial advisor no matter where you're at. And that's just not the reality. Not every single person needs to be working with a financial advisor. Actually, you know, by far and wide, you know, there's far fewer people that need a financial planner than there are people out there, right? Most people don't need a financial planner. And what I wanted to talk about and use this article for is to explain to individuals that are trying to figure out if they need one or not, you know, why do I need one and who needs one and who doesn't need one? Because in many instances, I've got a close friend of mine that is, uh, he's in his uh, early thirties and you know, him and his wife, you know, one is, uh, one is a pharmacist and the other one is a, a, a salesperson at a, a large you know, national corporation. They've got a good six-figure income. However, you know, they're just maxing out the retirement accounts and then they're putting a little bit away uh, that they can in, in a taxable account. You know, they don't have a lot of extra dollars. You know, what they need to be doing is just minimizing their taxes, keeping their investment costs low, and saving for the next 30 years. Dollar cost averaging into low-cost index funds. That's what they need to do. They say, Casey, we manage our finances. I go, why? Well, you don't need me. You just need to keep your costs low, be tax conscious, and everything's going to work out perfectly fine, but not everybody falls in that boat. Sometimes we really do need a financial planner, but we should only do it when it makes sense for our pocketbooks, right? And there right. are some instances that do. Sure. So when you're young and you're just getting started, I mean, you, you've got a little boo-boo on your finger. You're not having surgery, so you don't need an expert. Exactly. You know, when we get a paper cut, you know, or if we get a cut on our finger, you know, then we might put a Band-Aid on it. I mean, the, just the other night, you know, my son, he bumped his head a little bit and he had, a, you know, a little, little yeah. black and blue spot here. And we put a, a Band-Aid on it because it made him feel better. But the reality was that he didn't need to go to a, see a physician, right? Now, he got the flu not that long ago when he got the flu and he had a hundred and three and a half temperature, now it's time to go see a physician, right? You know, if we look at what happens, you know, when we have a cardiac problem or if we have cancer, we go and see a physician. We need a plan. My wife had knee surgery. We go get a plan. We had multiple uh, interviews with a couple of different doctors. They put together a comprehensive plan. We knew what we were doing the next day and for the next several years as we were going to manage a very serious condition. I think you can also think about it like your vehicle. Now, you could change your oil, right? You might change your own oil. However, if your belt snaps, you're going to be running in and getting an expert to fix that in all likelihood, unless we have the level of experience and knowledge that Lee Kelso here has about vehicles, which believe it or not, Lee actually has a YouTube channel where he fixes cars and teaches people how to do it. I, on the other hand, would probably struggle changing my oil in a lot of instances. I might even seek an expert in that avenue. Probably Lee. Yeah, yeah, call me. I'll be there for you. I'm, I'm there for you. So when we get thinking about where in the income stream all of this becomes important, that's really a personal kind of investment or yeah. a personal sort of situation, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you think about a young individual that's just getting started, right? They might have an income that's around the median level of household income in the U.S. that's in that $50,000, $60,000 range. What's the goal of that individual? They're just trying to save some money, right? They're just trying to put some money out of each paycheck into their 401k, into their Roth IRA, 
keep their costs low. You know, go to Wealthfront, go to Betterment, you know, go to a robo advisor. They can even do some tax loss harvesting for you if it's a taxable account. You don't have a lot of tax issues at that level, which is where you're going to find the biggest benefit of working with a true financial planner. It's not investment management, okay? You know, you can go out and work with a low-cost index fund. This is why they say, this is why Warren Buffett says, go buy the S&P 500 ETF and dollar cost average in because most financial advisors, most, most investment advisors will never beat the S&P 500 over an extended period of time, 10, 20 years, right? However, once you get to retirement, once you accumulate more assets, this is where value starts to come into play. You have too much in income, now you go, I'm maxing out my 401k, what do I do next? That's a tax planning problem. If we look at the average wealth in the United States, if we just look at the average savings account, about 57% in 2017, about 60% of individuals have less than $1,000 in their savings account. You know, that's, yes, they have a savings problem, right? right. They, they don't have a tax problem. This is someone that just needs to get the engine started. You know, pick up one of Dave Ramsey's books, you know, go to Financial Peace University and figure out how to pay down your debt and just get started saving. Now, you get to a point where you have $200,000, $500,000, $5 million, $10 million or more in assets. Now, you've got a different problem, right? Now, you have to figure out how to protect this nest egg that is substantial, especially if you're at or near retirement. You get at or near retirement, now it's not about accumulation at all costs. You don't say, well, I've got 20 years, I'm just going to throw it in the S&P 500, because what if next six months, the market's down 30% or 40%, and you need that money for emergencies, you need it for income. What if inflation rears its ugly head, and now we go back to the Jimmy Carter era. Now we've got 10, 15% inflation rates. Are you going to have something that's out there providing extra income in order to overcome what we're seeing for the cost of goods and services that's making retirement cost more and more? What about health care? What about long-term? There's a lot to think about when we get closer to retirement or we have a substantial amount of assets. You mentioned health care, but the other biggest threat to your retirement savings really is taxes. That tax yeah. planning is so important. Well, that's why I led with tax planning in this Kiplinger article, because there's nothing that I see adding more value to the people that we work with day in and day out, rather, other than tax planning. You know, whether it's tax loss harvesting, whether it's evaluating, doing Roth conversions, figuring out how we can minimize Social Security taxes or get rid of some 1099s altogether, that's where I see a lot of that alpha made up. You know, that's what I call tax alpha, right? We're getting tax alpha because you might have been making, say, 4% per year or 6% a year taxable, but you weren't keeping it at all. What if we can tax shelter that or better yet, create tax-free growth of 4 to 6%? Now we're creating some alpha. Now we're actually growing those dollars at a better rate. And you know, I've sat down and worked with CPAs on this, believe it or not, because CPAs are trained typically look backwards, right? Their report card, their scorecard is that tax return that says how much you own taxes last year. What we're doing as certified financial planner practitioners is going, well, what's 10 years from now look like? What does 20 years from now look like? The tax cuts we have today will expire in 2025. Are you going to be prepared for that? And then the other big uh, factor in your successful retirement is making sure you have income that you're not going to outlive. Right. Having an income strategy, you know, this is, this is sometimes convoluted for folks, I think, because they go, well, an income strategy, what do you mean by income? Because well, why is that so difficult to grasp? It's because for the last 20, 30, 40 years of your life, it's been about accumulation. It's about the return on your money, but now all of a sudden we have to switch to the return of our money. And income planning is vital when we see interest rates at all-time lows and we see market valuations at all-time highs. When we see that happen, that traditional portfolio you've been investing in and your 401k, which was just you know stocks and bonds you know that 60 40 mix or 80 20 mix whatever it was now the fixed income part of your portfolio has an issue. We're already seeing interest rates rise. What if they go up by one or two percent a year? You know, that, that is a, that's a huge leap, which I think is unlikely, but very possible at the same time. If we see those types of jumps in interest rates, the fixed income, the bond portion of your portfolio is going to get crushed. If we look at the equity side of your portfolio, how's that going to perform? When we look forward at market valuations that are what they are today, we should see a slow growth market or a major pullback in 
in the future and not just a little correction. We need a major pullback in the future in order to normalize current market valuations. And if that's the case, then I say it's time to put together a real plan for our income so that we just don't have to worry about it anymore. And that's the key, not worrying about our money in retirement. That's the key. Well, if you're at that point where you don't want to have to worry about it and you want a plan, I have an offer that I hope you'll take advantage of, and that is to be one of the next 10 people to call the office right now and request a complimentary review of your retirement plan. Casey's team will take a look at exactly how much you're paying in fees and expenses that you might not know about, money that could stay in your pocket instead. They'll take a look at how you're doing on tax planning and are you being as efficient with taxes as you can. The new tax law has some new opportunities you could be taking advantage of. And then as you just heard, retirement income planning is so important. What's the plan for that? Social Security is a big factor. Are you planning correctly for Social Security? All things they'll review in this complimentary analysis of exactly where you're at in your retirement plan. So get on the phone and be one of the next 10 callers now and you can start your way toward a purpose-based retirement. We'll be back in just a second taking a look at the role of estate planning and health care planning when you do need a financial plan. You need a plan to create the retirement you deserve. The first step is to tune in to the Purpose Based Retirement Radio Hour with Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. Saturdays at 11 a.m. and Sundays at 1 p.m. on WoWo 107.5 FM or Sunday mornings at 11 on 95.3 MNC. The highest educational achievement for a financial planner is the Certified Financial Planner Certification. At Howard Bailey, all of our frontline advisors are CFP practitioners. Certified financial planners have been thoroughly vetted with the right education and experience to coach you through the complexities of your retirement. Getting to retirement, that's really the easy part. Find someone with what it takes to get you through this next stage of your life. Would your financial and retirement affairs benefit from a higher level of insight and care? Call us now to find out. We started the program today taking a look at a new article in Kiplinger's that Casey wrote on when you don't need a financial planner. If you want to read that, you can just go to howardbailey.com, look for the read tab, and you'll be able to find the article there. But we're going to pick up the conversation now with estate planning. When don't I need yeah. help for estate planning? Right. Well, in a lot of instances, we do need help for estate planning, but in most instances, we don't. You know, I mean, we looked at it just a minute ago. You know, the average household in their savings account has less than $1,000. You know, the average individual needs to mainly focus on their beneficiaries more than anything else. And that can typically take, that can take care of all your probate issues. You can even put a transfer on death on your home, right? So all your real estate can transfer on death outside of probate. All your IRA raise, your brokerage accounts can transfer on death, you know, or they can have beneficiaries established that bypass probate. You don't need a will for those things. They can bypass your will at the same time. And, you know, individuals that need estate planning, you know, they might be in a position where they have an estate that's large enough where they actually might incur some estate taxes. Uh, we might also find some individuals that are closer to the end of their lives. And, and now they're focusing on what? They were focusing on dollars actually being left over in the first place and maybe even have a special needs child, right? And we we might need a special needs trust. You know, and then we actually do need to start establishing some of these different documents, right? Last will and testament, power of attorneys, guardianship. You know, if you have children and you don't have guardian established, that's a very scary thing. You need to be paying attention to these things, but a lot of them can get done on ter on, on LegalZoom.com. You know, my wife and I, that's what we used. We used LegalZoom, you know, years ago to establish our original estate planning documents. And then as our world evolved, as we opened up other businesses, as we continued to grow our estate and I picked up more life insurance, now I needed a bigger estate plan. I needed to work with an attorney in order to build that. I wanted a trust that didn't allow our children to just get all of those dollars. It was a goal-based trust I wanted established. So now our children have to graduate college and then they have matching income. So if they make 50000 then they can get 50000 from the trust, but it's a goal-based trust. They have to earn the right to have access to those dollars. You know, so there are some individuals that need estate planning, but many individuals don't. Healthcare planning, on the other hand, is something that we all need to be paying attention to. Well, I mean, think about the estate plan for this instance. You know, I, it'd be great to have a great estate plan for everyone, but that estate plan isn't worth anything if we don't have anything left over because we ended up getting it all stopped away in healthcare expenses or taxes. My Uncle Sam, for that matter, we have to wrap, I think, our tax planning and healthcare planning into that estate planning. And, you know, to touch back on the beneficiary issue, you know, I've, I've seen 
I've seen points where people have come in and we've reviewed their beneficiary where they've had an ex-spouse still listed as a beneficiary. You know, that ex-spouse is going to inherit those dollars, not your new spouse. You know, it doesn't matter what's in the will. I had another gal who uh, her father wanted her to be switched over as a beneficiary in her accounts, so he rewrote the will to leave everything to her. However, there weren't any beneficiaries on the accounts. As a result, it went through probate. The other children came in. Fighting ensued. Tens of thousands of dollars later in fees and in legal costs, the money ended up going to the wrong person. This is why having just those basic estate planning documents reviewed or just your beneficiary is vital. Then it comes to health care planning in order to make sure money's left over. You can talk about basic health care expenses, but that's not going to be the biggest risk you're going to face during retirement. It's going to be long-term care expenses that Medicare is not going to cover, right? Once you get beyond the Medicare period, Period, and now you're on your own, you're spending your own dollars, now you need to some type of long-term care coverage. And that means we need to evaluate a lot of different options. There's a lot of options today that we didn't have 10 or 20 years ago. For instance, I've got a couple I recently established a plan for. They had $100,000 sitting in a bank account not making anything. We ended up taking that $100,000, putting it into two different life insurance policies where they can have that money back at any time. It's liquid. However, if they need it for health care purposes, Purposes, there's an accelerated death benefit that will give them back twice what they have in there tax free. Now, we also coupled that up with part of their IRA. We took part of their IRA and set that aside into a separate hybrid long-term care policy where those dollars will slowly come out of that IRA, being converted tax-free so that if they never need them for long-term care, it passes on tax-free as a death benefit to their heirs with a nice little leverage growth rate, levering their insurability. But if they do need it, it'll pay out $7,000 a month for long-term care for an unlimited period of time. You know, these are the types of things we have to do in order to make sure that the estate plan even matters. So when do we need to be thinking about investment planning? We've covered all these other critical needs. What about that one? Well, when it comes to investment planning and we step into retirement, it's different than in our accumulation years. You know, in our accumulation years, what's the goal? It's to grow that money as fast as darn possible so that we can have enough that we can actually retire someday. It's all about accumulation. We don't care about the major pullbacks. You know, it's not even about inflation at that point, right? It's about growing that nest egg to a point that I can actually put together a purpose based retirement and start guarding myself against those risks of emergencies, income needs, market fluctuation, volatility, inflation, right? That's why we do investment planning in retirement is for long-term inflation because typically we've got there, we've got enough, right? We have enough in our accounts in order to actually last the rest of our lives as long as we don't experience hyperinflation, as long as we don't experience inflation that's higher than three or 4% a year, now we're probably okay. So when it comes to investment planning and retirement, we want to take a look at that and we want to take a look at putting together a plan with assets that are actually going to be the best inflation guards. So let's look internationally, let's look at commodities, let's look at currencies and make sure we're actually going to have more income in the future than we have today. That's when that's really vital. You know, it it's also makes a lot of sense to just take a look and see what's going on inside your investment strategy and make sure you're, the amount of risk that you're taking lines up with the amount of return that you're actually getting. And I say that you know, on, on, as a side note, because a couple of weeks ago, I sat down with a couple. Uh, and when we went down and we reviewed what they had done, they had bought a couple of mutual funds. Their brother had told them to buy. And that's where all their savings was going. $1,500 a month was going into these two different mutual funds. These mutual funds had a risk level of 81 on a scale of 0 to 100. And they're only averaging 6% a year over the last decade, underperforming the market and taking on more risks than the market. They lost more money than the market when it went down. They made less when the market went up. And what we were able to do is reposition them, lower that risk number, and drastically increase their average rate of return. But they would have never known that had they not sat down and actually broken those things apart and looked at what they had inside. They just said, you know, we just never did this before. We didn't know what we were doing. We just, life happened. And now we can fix it.
it's not too late. Yeah, and, and here's an opportunity that will make it very easy for you. A good way to get started is to be one of the next 10 people to give us a call right now, and we'll tip help you through a complimentary review of your complete retirement plan. We'll take a look at what's happening with your investment world. Is there more risk than you should be taking at this point? What about taxes? Are you paying more than you really need to? Is your social security structured the way it could be so that you'll have the optimum level of benefits? So much to think about in retirement and this is a good opportunity to get started. It's a no obligation complimentary chance to sit down with Casey or a member of the Howard Bailey team and learn more about your money so you can make really strong decisions for yourself moving forward. So I hope you're one of the next 10 people to pick up the phone and call now and inquire about this complimentary review of your entire financial situation. All right, let's get to our question of the day. What is the average rate of growth for the U.S. economy over the past decade? Is it 1% or maybe up to 4%? Casey has the answer when we come back. Today, you need a plan to create the retirement you deserve. The first step is to tune in to the Purpose Based Retirement Radio Hour with Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. Saturdays at 11 a.m. and Sundays at 1 p.m. on WoWo 107.5 FM or Sunday mornings at 11 on 95.3 MNC. Let me help you create the retirement you dream of. Go to my website and pick one of three education options to get started today. Get a copy of one of my retirement planning books, sign up for a Purpose Based Retirement Live event or go to the Purpose Based Retirement University. Two days of college level retirement planning instruction. With the right education and proper coaching, I believe anyone can create the retirement they dream of. It all begins with one step. Visit thepurposebasedretirement.com. Well, how did you do with our question of the day? The question was, what is the average rate of economic growth in the U.S. over the last decade? Casey? Well, Lee, the answer is, sadly enough, and probably surprisingly for you, is B, 2%. That is the average rate of U.S. economic growth, gross domestic product, over the last 10 years. And you go, well, how is that possible when I've seen the market go up 100% over the last decade? I've averaged around 7% a year in my portfolio over the last 10 years. How could we possibly see economic growth that isn't even half what the stock market's returned? That's because those are two very different things and we're going to talk about that right now and what we can expect from the market moving forward given what's going on in a lot of the different sectors that are out there today. We're going to talk about some of this slow and tepid economic growth that we've seen and how that should accelerate moving forward. What we've been is we've been stuck in a school zone over the last several years and that means why well and that really comes from a few different areas. One is major economic draw drawdowns take longer to recover. Well think back to 2000 2003, we saw the market down 40%. We ended up with the lost decade, go through 2008, several years to recover. We go back to 1929, the market's down 89%. It takes 25 years to recover. Increased regulation has been an anchor, holding down especially our financial system. And we can also see that worldwide deleveraging and austerity measures have continued to cause slow growth in the economy. But still, the economy has continued to plow forward and what we need in order to escape this school zone everyone hates driving slow in those school zone the speed limit is 20 you find yourself going 40 we have to pay attention because we have to go so slow and it's a little bit irritating this is how we get out one we have to improve the fundamentals two we have to have a long enough railway for us to be able to experience that growth we have to have room for that growth we also have to experience a turbo boost in order to get the engine started and that can lead to the escape. Where have we been and what has led to the growth in the stock market or the growth in the economy after the 2008 financial collapse? And one is monetary policy. That's what's driven us to get us to where we're at today is the increase in the Fed balance sheet, which we can see has not just doubled, has not just tripled, but it's went up about 500%. That's how much we've seen this expansion from quantitative easing. What's been going on? It's been the Federal Reserve going out there, buying bonds, putting more dollars into the money supply and driving down interest rates. That's what got the economy running after the 2008 crisis. Now we need to see a switching of the baton. We need to see a movement from away from a government-driven economy over to small businesses, mainly driving 
that economy. And this is why small business confidence is vital. It is a leading indicator. And as we can see, that small business confidence is at all time highs. This is an amazing statistic. In 2014, with fewer than 500 workers, small businesses accounted for 99.7% of all business in the United States. Firms with less than 20 workers made up 89% of businesses in the United States. And small businesses accounted for 60% of net new jobs from 92 through 2013. We always want to talk about the apples. We always want to talk about the large, big employers of the world that are employing over 500 workers, the GMs of the world, when in reality, small business is what's driving the economy. Let's take a look at our runway. If we look back throughout history, going all the way back to World War II, anytime the Fed has raised interest rates too high, we've seen the money supply get constrained and we've entered recession. Look back at what happened from 2000 to 2003. This arrow points to a peak in interest rates where the Fed rose interest rates too high above economic growth. We entered a recession. The same thing happened during 2008. Prior to 2008, interest rates were risen too high by the Fed, crossed that line of economic growth. We ended up in a recession. And now we find ourselves today with a large gap between where our interest rates are and where economic growth is, giving us a runway for growth into the future. And corporate tax reform might be that boost that we need to get things going. Small businesses polled found that the number one concern and most critical issue that was facing them was taxes, 25%. That's twice as many that said that regulation, consumer demand, or the cost of employee health care, surprisingly, came in in second. Corporate tax reform's impact will be broad. In the short term, we see repatriate, repatriation of a large amount of dollars coming back to the U.S., small businesses seeing better bottom lines, pass-through entities, getting that 20% pass-through deduction, and stronger earnings on the back of these lower taxes. Long term, we see more competitive positioning for companies, fewer inversions, that means more dollars left in the United States, more jobs, and more investment it all up. We have fundamentals meaning phase two, railway being low recession risk, turbo boost being tax reform should get us out of this school zone. However, have you ever seen one of these? Have you ever seen a black swan? Because these are the events in the market that are unpredictable. Every time we've seen a recession occur, well strategists have accounted for that and said, well, we expect positive returns over the next 12 months and they've got it wrong. We never see these events come Coming, like 9-11, like the real estate crisis, like Lehman's Brothers. So you have to make sure with whatever strategy you have that you're hoping for the best, but most importantly, you're planning for the worst. And if you are not really sure exactly what is going on in your portfolio and where you stand, we have an opportunity I hope you'll take advantage of, and that is to be one of the next 10 callers who ring the office and inquire about a complimentary review of just what's going on in your retirement plan. We'll take a look at taxes and find out if there's an opportunity for you to do better there. How about Social Security planning? Are you set up correctly? And are you headed toward a good place with Social Security? Income needs, health care, so many other factors that need to be discussed as you you head toward retirement. So I hope you'll be one of the next 10 callers to pick up the phone and call in for an appointment with Casey or a member of the Howard Bailey team so you can get on the path to your very own purpose-based retirement. And you can always go to the purposebasedretirement.com to learn more. You can get a copy of one of Casey's books there. And of course, drop us an email at info at howardbailey.com anytime you like. We'll see you next Sunday.